This is Armchair Traveller and I'm John Clayton and welcome to one of the beautiful areas of Palos Verdes. This happens to be the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy Reserve of Forestall. So come with me as we explore some of the interesting, really beautiful aspects of this area and some of the hidden secrets of the plants and vegetation that surrounds it. So come with me, sit back and enjoy the Forestall Reserve. We're talking with Louise Olfanis, the communications manager for the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, and we're standing in what has to be one of the premier locations in Palos Verdes. Tell us, Louise, first of all, where we are. Well, we're standing at a recognition site for one of the people that made the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve possible. Her name is Becky Cool, and um, she has dedicated this site to her late husband, Taze Douglas Cool. And um, with supporters like her and individuals that are dedicated to open space, we were able to preserve 1,400 acres for the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. And we're in Forestall right now. So when you say she committed to helping the Land Conservancy, uh, I'm assuming that that means she gave some financial stuff to your organization? Yes, financial support, and she's been a close friend and, uh, and dedicated to open space, so she also serves on our fundraising committee and tries to encourage all of her friends and colleagues um, to learn about the open space that we have here on the peninsula and how important it is to maintain it and restore it. How wonderful that we have people like that. Exactly. Uh, now for a little more insight into the area we're standing in, we're going to talk to a gentleman with a wonderfully English sounding name, but he's actually from South Africa. That's next. So I made reference just now to your name. I'm uh, going to take the liberty of calling you Bruce, but tell me your full name. Well, I do prefer Bruce, but it is Beesman Simmons which is a mixture of actually Dutch and French. Uh, often I ask people to call me by my nickname, which my initials, BBS. <laughs> BBS. Much simpler. Okay, I understand you're from South Africa and you are recently elected to the president of the Palace Verdes Land Conservancy. What were some of the things that uh, got you involved in wanting to serve with the Palace Verdes Land Conservancy? I grew up loving wide open spaces as a kid and in San Pedro, there was a, a group working to preserve a place called White Point. That's since been declared a nature preserve, and I'm wonderfully proud of it. I walk there almost every morning. Okay, having said that, tell me a little bit about the area we're sitting in. Uh, I happen to know this area very well because I live just below here, and these cliffs behind us over there, and the landscape is, is absolutely incredible. Tell me a little bit about it. You're right, it is dramatic and beautiful. These cliffs uh, are uh, the remnants of a quarry. And This was originally going to be a quarry that they started to make a quarry? Yes. The, the, the other really nice thing about this area is that there's so much native habitat here. I'm looking at Toyon, coastal sage scrub, cactus. These are all plants that have been living here for centuries, probably thousands of years. Are they protected? The land is protected. The plants themselves are not especially protected, but being in the protected land gives them a perfect place to thrive. And so viewers who want to come and, you know, experience this themselves, they can take one of the Land Conservancy's walks? Absolutely. We have about a dozen walks a year. Take a look at our website and you can find a walk that suits you. Uh, the dates are published, they're free, and public is welcome. Supposing you know absolutely nothing <laughs> like, like me about uh, what this has here from a nature point of view, on these walks, um, are there people such as yourself or someone that can explain what the plants are and what some of the vegetation is? People are a lot smarter than I am do that very well indeed uh, from the geology the history uh, to the plants uh, some of the uses that the indigenous people had for the plants it's all explained it's a wonderful story the walks are not especially strenuous 
but the people leading them are very well informed. So what are some of the plants that we'll see in this walk? I find that absolutely incredible and amazing. So describe some of the plants that we'll see. Uh, there is a plant in particular that if you're lucky and here during bloom, uh, it's a rare, very rare plant found on the mainland because uh, many plants are naturalized on Catalina Island and this particular plant was found here in uh, 2004 and it doesn't have a common name. It's the uh, uh, Crossoma californica. I suppose, I suppose the common name is Catalina crossosoma. The, the small plant there with the yellow flower is uh, fortunately for us blooming a little early. It's the uh, Encelia and later in the season you'll see lots of those. So tell me a little bit, I gather there's a plant with a, a, a licorice smell? Yes, indeed. In fact, there's some right here. This is fennel, and uh, it's in a rather dormant stage right now. Usually it's a little greener, but it's quite invasive, and we work pretty hard to deplete it around here. And can you eat that too? You can. It's not as pleasant as... Um, yeah, milder dill and those kinds of plants, but it, yeah, it's edible. I see when we look here, we can see uh, the Terranea Resort. Now, are they involved with the Land Conservancy? They've been wonderful supporters, and we uh, were fortunate enough to be able to provide them all the native plants that they have on their premises. They're doing a super job of blending them in with their landscape and maintaining them. When you say we provided them, uh, the Land Conservancy, <laughs> it's probably my British sense of humor, but I see people from the Land Conservancy coming and sort of digging up plants around the peninsula and then transporting them willy-nilly to Terrena. Is, <laughs> is that the case or is it a different format? Well, I enjoy your sense of humor, having some of that in my own genes, but uh, no, we have our own nursery. Oh. We collect seed stock from here on the peninsula so it's genetically specific to this area and well adapted to our local microclimate. We grow seeds, uh, grow plants from seed and uh, we're able to sell them to developments like Terranea and incidentally we provided many of the native plants for Trump National Golf Course as well and they also are doing a super job of maintaining those. That's very interesting. When you say uh, we, it makes me think that uh, is the Land Conservancy just a Palos Verdes operation or is it statewide, nationwide? Good question. We're, we're specific to the Palos Verdes geographic peninsula. So we have uh, preserves predominantly in Rancho Palos Verdes, which is the largest single preserve. But there are also lands we help manage in Malaga Cove and uh, in Rolling Hills Estates, George F. Canyon, uh, Chandler Preserve, and in the city of Los Angeles, White Point Nature Preserve. And our nursery is actually on the fuel depot in North Gaffey. Oh, okay. One of the most important things when we talk about these areas around Palos Verdes is, is for our viewers to know how to get here. So could you give us a brief description on how you arrive at this little piece of paradise? Well, I'm going to assume everybody knows Palos Verdes Drive South and where the Trump National Golf Course is. And essentially opposite the entrance to the golf course is a street called Forestall. Take that, you'll be heading inland and slightly uphill, go to the end of it, lock your car and take a nice walk. Perhaps another thing uh, I need to ask you is for people watching, tell us your website and uh, can uh, viewers get involved if they want to? Happy to. The website is www.pvplc.org. And we couldn't do a fraction of what we do without volunteers. Everybody from planting, sorting seeds, pulling weeds, getting rid of fennel, Pulling weeds? Pulling weeds, yes, there are <laughs> weeds out here. Uh, restoration is very difficult unless you keep the invasives out. You need to give the new guys the original stuff, chance to get settled. Once it's settled, weeds are not a problem. 
and sitting here in this glorious weather, this amazing surroundings, what an incredible opportunity to serve the community, enjoy yourself, and, I don't want to put words in your mouth, have an absolutely wonderful time. You said it. So that's about it for this wonderful area in Forestall. It is magnificent. I urge you to come up here and see it for yourself. It is truly, truly magnificent. This is John Clayton in the Palace Verdes Land Conservancy Forestall area. Come and see us. We're standing in the home of the Palace Verdes Land Conservancy talking with the Executive Director, Andrea Vono. Now, I understand that we're going to do a whole series of shows about the wonderful things that you guys do. So give our audience a brief overview of some of the things they can look forward to. Oh, thank you, John. We're so excited to be launching this um, segment into the Armchair Traveler Show, which will take us around the peninsula throughout this year and beyond, um, focusing on really special and unique aspects of the Land Conservancy's um, involvement and partnership in different unique features on the peninsula. What are some of the really exciting things that, I mean, the peninsula is such a beautiful place. Uh, I'm assuming that we're going to go and sort of see a variety of places? Absolutely. We're going to, um, on more of the north end of the peninsula, we're going to explore the habitat and, and hopefully view an endangered Palos Verdes blue butterfly. It's one of the most rare butterflies on the planet, and we'll get to see some of the um, recovery efforts. I'm assuming also that uh, when we have these, uh, our audience go on these trips, so I'm sure people who are watching will wonder, what about age? You know, uh, maybe that, uh, some people are sort of senior citizens. Uh, is this really open to, you know, people from like, I don't know, young kids all the way up to whatever? I mean, absolutely. The, the, I think the peninsula has something for everybody. There's lots of different um, trails with different levels of difficulty. And um, I think through the spirit of the show, what we're trying to promote is how um, varied and complex and fun and interesting the peninsula is and really highlight lots of different features. So everyone has something to, to benefit from the experience here. In case our viewers want more information about some of the things that they'll see in this show, do you have any publications or booklets that they could uh, purchase? And if you do, tell me a little bit about them and what they are. Oh, absolutely. We have a couple great publications that um, help people to explore the peninsula. The Best Hikes Guide and also the Exploring the Palos Verdes Peninsula Driving and Walking Tour. Um, they both are, have great details about um, how to access um, really unique features and give historical information, um, parking, lots of great info. And we have them available here in our office. Um, on Silver Spur, available on our website, www.pvplc.org, and also um, throughout the peninsula at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center and um, the library. My goodness, <laughs> they're absolutely <laughs> everywhere. They are. <laughs> and also, if you have friends or family visiting, they're really great guides and, and kind of fun inspiration to go see and explore something different. And you can just lay them on your coffee table, hoping that someone will look at them and say, what's that? And then they say, let's go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, nice inspiration and, and great information to be able to get out and explore. Terrific. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.